Hello, everyone, and welcome to Film Independent Presents. I'm Rachel Bremer, Director of Events for Film Independent. Before we get started with today's very exciting conversation, we have to give praise to our loyal supporters, our lead sponsor, the Hollywood Foreign Press Association, and our screening sponsor, Vision Media. With that, I'm honored to introduce our guest moderator. She's practically film independent family at this point. Please welcome Variety's Janelle Riley. Janelle, please take it from here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here for this film independent Q&A with Old Henry. And at this time, please join me in welcoming today's guests. We have writer, director, executive producer, Popsy Ponsaroli and star Tim Blake Nelson. Thank you so much for being here. Why'd you settle here? Up at dawn, working the crops, rain or shine. You'll discover there's worse arrangements. Paul's a good man, Wyatt. I ain't him. Stop fretting about it. You know I saw what's in the back of that closet. I've done things I wish I could take back. I best go look for the rider. Hey, what's gonna happen will happen quick. You got a lot of fight for a farmer. You have no idea the hailstorm you fixing to let loose. Consider me properly warned. I uh, want to start at the beginning with Potsy. I'm, I'm just curious what the initial spark or idea was for Old Henry, because I know sometimes it's a character, it's a story, it's a setting. What sort of compelled you to write this story? Uh, I mean, this one definitely was a setting. Uh, it was that that location. Um, you know, I, I stumbled on that that little house down in that ridge and sat out there for, you know, a few hours just kind of walking through it. And it's a really, you know, it's a hundred plus year old home and it, it sits on these stones and, um, you know, it's just a beautiful house. So hanging out and it started to get dark and that got a little creepy because it's out in the middle of the woods. And, uh, you know, I guess the, the idea of what would I do if somebody came up right now? You don't know if you can trust them. And that kind of sparked the whole the whole thing and um it wasn't until later that we added the you know the historical figure aspect to it um and that was that was basically you know can we can we make this a more marketable thing by adding you know an actual historical element to it and and uh this is after everybody's seen it so i guess i can give it away yeah it's okay. i'm so excited i can finally <laughs> yeah, talk spoilers yeah right it is it's nice <laughs> but uh billy the kid was always one of my favorite uh western heroes or villains either way you want to look at it and uh it was an easy ad so so i'm first of all a little surprised because i thought maybe you built that house it was just there that house was there the and it's funny because the front porch is actually on the other side of the house and so we we had talked about would it, would it be possible to actually lift it and flip it around um but the house is being held together by termites so i think it would have just kind of crumbled <laughs> so um, so the owner of the land actually let us knock down an old barn and use the barn wood to build a porch. Um, we built the, the hog pen and all the fencing and everything. So they let us really kind of make it what we needed it for, for the movie. And when you say you stumbled up, uh, upon it, I assume you just weren't out for a walk. I assume you were like location. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it was, uh, this is, you know, it's about 40 minutes outside of Nashville. Uh, it's a 2000 plus acre plot of land that, you know, they're very, They've, they've shot a bunch, you know, they, they allow people to shoot on their property. So we were scouting for another project and, um, you know, just kind of had to take a sidetrack to, to walk through this thing. So that's so cool. I love that a location inspired the whole story. Yeah. yeah. So obviously this film doesn't work without the right old Henry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Tim, how did the script find its way to you and what interested you in the role aside from the title? <laughs> It's just one of those weird ones that came over the transom. Uh, I, I was cooking dinner one night and I got an email that said, would you want to be Henry in a movie called Old Henry? Uh, and, and so I, I said to my wife, well, it happened. Now I'm playing the, the old people. Uh, <laughs> and, um, and I read it and was very taken with the, the tautness of the storytelling, most of all but also with how it explored what parenting is. 
because I think that's really at the heart of this story, the relationship between the father and the son. And so much of what Henry does, my character in the film is motivated by his love for his kid. And as the, again, the father of three boys, I'm, uh, that's something that spoke to me. And I thought Potsy had really, um, had really centered uh, a, a great Western with a wonderfully intimate and in certain ways, tender story. And so I said, I got to meet this guy. And um, Potsy and I and his producer, Shannon Houchins met over Zoom and I, I was in. And Potsy, for you, um, having seen the movie, it's very obvious why Tim was cast in this role, but did you write it with him in mind or at what point did you start thinking about him? I think it was, you know, I, I didn't write it with him in mind because I didn't think Tim was a, uh, when we had first started this, I didn't think he was a reasonable get. Um, and I think, because, you know, Tim's been in everything and I'm a huge fan of his. And it wasn't until I started seeing, you know, when you make an indie movie, there's a list of who's worth what in the back, you know, you have to kind of go down that process of who's worth what. And it was, you know, none of those names were fitting because, you know, this person, I, I don't know, Tim just kind of embodied the whole thing to me and in if you look at a picture of Billy the Kid and Tim side by side they were actually pretty similar I mean you and Tim knows it's it's very uh as far as stature and 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 size and and the idea that you know this this person kind of ruled the west in such a he was a terror you know people feared him and for that from that to come from such an unassuming person I thought was amazing um, I mean, unassuming in the nicest way, Tim. <laughs> I just want to know what I have to do to get on that list. <laughs> yeah, <man. laughs> you, you don't want on that list. You're, you're on a better list. <laughs> Tim, um, I'm curious, who do you think would win in a shootout, Billy the Kid or Buster Scruggs? Uh, <laughs> probably, <laughs> probably Billy the Kid because Buster Scruggs would be too busy uh, showing off. <laughs> I mean, obviously you, you, you played a cowboy before with Buster Scruggs. Did that role help you at all in preparing for this one? It did and it didn't. I certainly knew my way around a, a pistol because of all the prep work on Buster Scruggs. But in a certain sense, I had to unlearn all that and, and start from scratch with, with old Henry because that's really not the guy that Potsy wrote. The Buster Scruggs character is not who Potsy wrote. It's almost the, the converse of him. Whereas Buster Scruggs sees the pistol as, uh, as, as a, uh, a device for show and histrionics. Um, old Henry sees it as a lethal tool with which he no longer wants any involvement. And so he approaches it with a, a, a measure of regret um, that then recedes as he refamiliarizes himself with it and then something else is awakened in him. Uh, so it was a start from scratch situation in many respects, but I was also lucky to, to have done so much work with the pistol beforehand. And this film is set in a very specific world of the Old West. Um, Potsy, how much did you know about this world before making this film? How did you go about researching and capturing it so well? You know, I, I thought I had done research, you know, I, I, I was familiar with the Old West. And then when Tim signed on, um, you know, on that first Zoom call, one of the things he asked was, can we, can we go back into the script and, and really work on it and work on the character and work on, and just, you know, go through it together. I was like, and to me, that was an easy answer because, you know, I, I think Tim is an insanely talented filmmaker and actor. And so, I mean, we spent weeks and weeks and weeks just kind of on the phone every day, a couple hours, watching movies, reading books, and just really diving into the history and the, and the, and that, the location and, and that part of the country and just, you know, who Billy the Kid was. And I think we found a lot. Um, I mean, I don't want to speak for Tim, but I think we both kind of really learned who he was and, and kind of got a good grip on it. And and that was one of my favorite parts of the whole process was it was just that that collaboration in in finding who who Henry was and 
Um, and so, you know, I think I know a lot more now on the, <laughs> on the old West. Now we, we prepped together, Patsy and I, for months mm -hmm. on this. And, and I think we probably had as much fun, if not more fun during the, the prep and the research and, and the, the decision-making process between writer, director, and actor that can hopefully go along with the director, of course, always having the last say. Um, then, you know, I think we had more fun with that process almost than we did actually shooting the movie. Uh, <laughs> It was except, such, for, uh, except for you diving through the window. That was right. <laughs> <the> fun day. <laughs> uh, it's such a luxury to 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 work with a director like Poxy, who really wants to collaborate in that way because he just loves every aspect of the process so much. Was there anything that either of you learned about Billy the Kid that kind of surprised you, or, or maybe everything surprised you? Maybe you didn't know that much going in. Uh, I would say everything. I knew very little about it. Uh, and so the research process was an absolute delight. Uh, and that's everything from his biography to his, his strange code of ethics, which is a combination between, I don't know, Anton Chigurh and, <laughs> and uh, Abraham and Job. Uh, um, but, but also the physical life of the guy as described, but also as is evident in the one photograph of him. And, and puzzling that out um, over a period of months because we had that luxury was one of the most exciting processes as an actor I've ever gone through. Mm -hmm. But what about you, Potsy? Yeah, I mean, I think the, you know, I, I grew up on Young Guns and, and just the, you know, I'd, I'd done deep dives before into did he get away? Was he, you know, did Pat Garrett let him go? But I think the biggest thing that stuck out to me in reading, you know, especially Pat Garrett's book on Billy the Kid, it was, he was, Billy the Kid was such a, he just never gave up no matter what. So if he was in a fist fight and he got beat up, he would never stay down. He would, you know, he'd stand up with a rock, come back with that or come back with a, a, a log or whatever, whatever he needed to do to win. Um, and you just couldn't keep him down. I thought that was that was a really cool piece to him that uh, that I think shows at the end here. You know, it's no matter what the odds are, he, he's just and he gets so excited. You know, it's it's such an adventurous spirit in him to to go after that and to go you know to enjoy the odds being stacked against him, um, which I think is a fun a fun aspect to him. Well, is there really only one photo of him in existence? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's, and it's, it's and, and, go ahead. No, you uh, go. I was going to say the same thing. I, I'm sure it's 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 really cool that it's a posed picture. It's not a candid shot. So it's you know it's it's what he put forward for us to see and and kind of seeing what that is is, is what his version of that was was pretty cool. That's exactly uh, what I was about to say. So there's there's a lot of psychology in it too. Uh. I want to talk about the rest of this amazing ensemble. I want to start with Gavin Lewis, who plays Wyatt. Where did you find him? And, and you know, when you're putting together a family and you're saying, okay, this is going to be your son who you've known his entire life. Um, was there any sort of a chemistry read between him and Tim? Or, you know, do you just have to sort of trust the process? Gavin came uh, in an open audition. We had, uh, we saw just a bunch of, a bunch of kids and, um, you know, he, he had always, his first, first read just really hit me uh, just because he had the emotional part of it. Um, and he, I think out of, it, it just kind of happened that he does look a little more modern, um, you know, with his, his young Timberlake hair. And um, <laughs> he, he has, uh, he's just a really good actor. And, and I think it sort of fit though that, because there were a couple, couple other guys that were a little more, uh, felt a little more old timey would fit into that world a little more, but I liked that Gavin did have a more modern look and the idea that, you know, Henry's whole job is to keep his son from the modern world that's slowly encroaching on them. Um, I kind of like that he he had that look to him and um, I don't know, he, and, you know, his height, the idea that Trace could be his uncle, that, that fit there. So there were a lot of things that fit with Gavin. Um, you know, he just, I think he just got the, he just got the character. I think he did a really amazing job 
Um, and, he, and with him, he was, and, and he on set, Gavin's the nicest kid. I mean, he's just such a delight to have on set. Um, Tim, you have thought? No, he's that? great. I mean, you know, I, I, I had thought you found him at the Schwab's drugstore. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he's a friend of the family <laughs> uh, no he's great and and I um, it was a natural relationship between us because he looked at me as a grizzled character actor uh, <laughs> and so that that act and all that attends it was was carried on the screen in really nice ways he's a wonderful wonderful young actor you don't think he might have been like a little bit intimidated working with you um if he was, that probably wasn't a bad thing, but I don't think so. I, you know, I, I, I really, um, because I came in uh, to a very big role uh, um, in, in, in Oh Brother, Where Art Thou from almost complete obscurity and was treated so well by George and uh, John. Um, and Holly Hunter and, and John Goodman. Uh, you know, I, I, I've always tried to return that uh, to, to actors um, who might come onto a set and, and, and think, oh, he's been in so many movies. And um, I'd like to do everything I can to, to give actors, younger actors, the welcome that I got. Uh, it's the very, very, very least I can do. Um, and um, almost all the young actors I've ever met are really cool, decent uh, people anyway, so it's not difficult. Uh, some of the other cast members, I think Stephen Dorff is fantastic in this, and Trace Atkins. He's the one that you met at the Schwab's drugstore. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I met him in Leapers Fork in Nashville at a, at a um, it's kind of like a old-timey bar, restaurant, general store. So you're not far off. <laughs> like uh, had, you ran into him or you had a meeting there? No, uh, so he got gotten the script, he read it and he liked it. He loved that Tim was a part of it. And he just wanted to meet, you know, and have a couple of beers and just get to know me and, and hear what we thought. So, um, so it was a general store. <laughs> so, um, and nobody, nobody dies on screen like Steven Dorff. It's pretty, <laughs> you know, he's, he's got skills in that, in that department. <laughs> Trace Atkins is fantastic too. And apparently I, I, I'm naive. I didn't realize he has like a pretty um, extensive acting resume. Yeah, Trace is great. Trace, um, we know, you know, my business partner owns a record label. So a lot of the country music world is, is kind of, you know, very close by proxy. So Trace, um, I mean, he's, Trace is the nicest, kindest, gentle giant you've ever met. Um, he, uh, and I think the idea there, because he's such an, you you recognize him so easily in movies and stuff. And I really wanted to hide that as much as possible and take away some of his toughness. So when you first meet him, he's in the overalls. We we put his hair up under a wig and, you know, put him in a hole so he didn't seem as imposing. And uh, it was, you know, put him behind Tim in the frame. So it was, there was a lot that went into hiding his, uh, the height on Trace. Um, and I, I, my wife jokes that when he gets on the horse, you know, the the, the saddle leans a little bit, but he, um, it was, uh, he, Trace was fantastic. And, you know, just, I think everyone on set, it was really fun because, you know, like Tim, especially nobody would ever go to the trailers. Everyone just wanted to hang out and, and really enjoy their time. And, and so it was, it was a lot of fun. Uh, we had a great, great cast. I'm impressed you had trailers because I know you shot this on an independent budget. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At the same time, the, the production values are so great from the costumes and, you know, the hair and the makeup. How did you go about achieving such authenticity from top to bottom on an independent budget? I, I think really just really good crew. Um, you know, Brianna Quick was our uh, wardrobe stylist. And so she, I mean, she was amazing. Everything was that was a big thing is, you know, you see some of these films and, and it's the shirt will look too clean or whatever. So she really spent time just making everything feel thick and, and dirty. And, you know, like he hadn't, he hadn't washed his clothes in a week. And when he did, it was in the Creek, you know, it's, it's that kind of, that kind of feel to the, in the texture to the clothing. So 
Um, and then, you know, hair and makeup were amazing production. Every, everyone, I think everyone really enjoyed the project and, and just put in so much work um, and really felt ownership in, in what they did. And, and I think that's a big piece of it. Tim, for you, you can prepare so much for a role before arriving on set, but how much does it help to actually put on those costumes? And I actually don't know how extensive the hair and makeup was on you because it looks so natural, um, but how much does that ultimately help you find that character? Well, there was a lot of consultation with Rihanna Quick about the wardrobe and, and with also with Potsy. Uh, and I, I have, you know, I was preparing for this role for about nine months. Uh, and a lot of that time um, was spent uh, in advance working with David Atherton, who's this incredible makeup artist with whom I've worked about a dozen times now and whom Potsy thankfully agreed to bring on to the movie uh, to, to head up the department. And uh, David and I, did extensive work, really looking at the, the picture of Billy the Kid, uh, reading about him, um, you know, the teeth were very particular, the drooping eye. Uh, and we really wanted to find a way to, to make that work from the inside of me out, rather than it all seeming to be um, applique. Uh, and so again, thanks to Potsy and his wonderful producers, uh, David and I were able to get to set weeks early and work every day, realizing what we've been talking about for months uh, and finding it with all the time we needed to be able to do that so that it could be put in front of Potsy and he could make sure that it was also what he wanted. Um, so it was a really, really good process. Again, so much of what works about this movie is because um, Potsy and his producers allowed things to happen the way they should, um, particularly on an independent time, uh, independent, independent film, um, when you don't have a lot of money, but you can have a lot of time mm -hmm. uh, if people are willing to give it. And um, uh, they were, and so, we were able to work really patiently and realize uh, this character. Can I ask about the shooting schedule? Because I heard a rumor about the ridiculous amount of days that you had on this and I just want to <laughs> confirm it. <laughs> we had uh, 21 days. Um, and it's funny because when Tim signed on, he said, how many do you have? I said, I think we had 23 at the time. No, like, we had 18. We had eight, that's right. And Tim was like, I think, you know, I think we need 25. And I was like, I, I want to do 25. And the producers hearing Tim ask, if Tim asked, we got it. So we had 25. And then after we did the budget, we had 23. And then going into shooting, we had 22. And I actually lost one more. They took one more away from me halfway through shooting. So we had to kind of adjust our schedule. Um, so it was, it was, and it was COVID and it was winter. So that daylight hours were, you know, a lot shorter. So it was, um, it was a tough, tough schedule. Uh, but I, I don't, I mean, I feel like we got every, you know, I, I, I would have loved to have a little more time in certain places, but, you know, I think, I think we were able to move quick and, and really get everything. So um, it worked out. <laughs> so for each of you, what ended up being the biggest challenge on making the film? And it can be, you know, a particular scene. It can be something in preparation. It could just be, you know, coming back and dealing with new COVID restrictions, which I think we're still kind of navigating. You want to go first, Tim? What, what do you want? I'll, uh, how, sure. We got, do you want to talk first? You're both. No, so I, I, need to, I need to think about mine. <laughs> so. uh, <laughs> you know, with me, I guess it was two aspects of it. One was when I was reading the script and learned, uh, as the audience does, um, that this guy was actually Billy the Kid. That brought up a lot of questions for me about my own suitability for the role because I'm not a violent person um, and I'm generally a forgiving person. Uh, and, and I, and 
and I don't own any guns. You know, there was, <laughs> even though I grew up in Oklahoma, um, it just, the, the distance between that character and me is quite uh, long. And I didn't want to show up on Potsy's set and disappoint him. And so it was, it was really, you know, the challenge was, can I actually do this? I can play a strict father, but when it comes to, to, to the violence, um, both spiritually and also physically, handling the guns, and it's not just one gun, it's many guns, uh, and doing so in a minimalist and unyielding way, rather than in a showy way or histrionic way, felt like space I'd never occupied. Um, and, and so that scared me. Uh, luckily, there was a lot of prep time. Uh, and then the other issue was the emotional places that he goes by the end of the movie. Um, and again, time was a, was a big ally, just having a lot of time with the role and being able to work on it every day for months and months, and really take the, the care that I knew Potsy was going to need because this is a director's medium and you want to come through for your director. Um, and uh, he had a lot of skin in the game, Potsy. And I just didn't want to fuck up. I wanted to be good for him. <laughs> um, and so, uh, you know, the physical and emotional realities of playing this guy, that was, those were the big challenges for, for me. Yeah, well, first of all, Tim, you did, you did the opposite of fuck up. You were amazing in it. So, and I think everybody else agrees. <laughs> so, um, I guess, you know, there's two pieces of it that were, that stand out the most. One was just the weather. Um, I mean, we were, you know, this was 30 degree weather and it was, especially the night when, uh, when Dugan comes to attack and he's under the, under the porch and Tim has to beat him up in the yard. That was, that was one of the coldest nights we had. And, you know, we had this 12 by kind of keeping some rain off us, but we had to move it when we started shooting. And just, I mean, these guys were rolling around the mud, just freezing cold and the crew is all wet. And, you know, those were some, those were some tough moments. Um, but I think the biggest, the thing that was the most difficult for me was that, I guess, just going into that last shootout and, and really trying to figure out, you know, what those sequences were going to be and what, how that was going to work. And, and the, you know, cause then the idea of the last moment was going to be Tim's character and Steven Dorff's character having a hand-to-hand -hand battle ending in the creek where Tim drowns him. Um, and we tested the water and it turned out it had a coli in it. So we had to, uh, two days, <laughs> two days before, and there, there was a question of, can we just do it anyway? But that didn't, not allowed to do that. So, um, two days before I actually had to rewrite that scene. Uh, and so it was just, you know, it's, it's that, okay, what's going to be as good in that moment and what, you know, how, how can you make this a good scene and, and what are the angles and how are the stunts going to work? And cause you know, we had a great film up to this point and this was late in the shoot schedule. And so it's like, you don't want to mess up in those moments. So I think that was, those are the most stressful moments for me is the, the shootout and the action. And the, I think the ones I tried to, prep them most for or cram at the last minute but <laughs> so that's so funny to hear Go and ahead. you just happened at the last minute to come up with one of the great shootouts ever <laughs> i was just gonna say the shootout is so perfect i can't even imagine it any other way well that's and now i can't either <laughs> Well, again, congratulations on such a fantastic movie. I want to remind everyone watching at home, it's available video on demand. Uh, so you can watch it again, which I highly recommend when you watch it a second time, knowing um, and it's not just all about the twist, but it is really fun to see the seeds that are sort of planted throughout. Thank you so, so much for watching at home. And thank you both so much for being here. Yeah, thank, thank you for having us. A lot of fun. Thank you.